Yeah, um, actually, interesting. I am a supporter, by the way, of paying, first of all, the national living wage. I had huge debates with the then chancellor um, at the time and persuaded him finally that we needed to commit to get the level of the what was called the minimum wage up to a higher level, and that's now rising up to nine pounds. And I think the idea of doing that is sensible because otherwise the state just steps in and has to top up low wages anyway, so it goes round in a circle. So the answer is those who employ people need to pay them better wages and wages that reflect the nature of what their living conditions are. And interestingly, when I arrived at the Department of Work and Pensions, I asked the single question, you know, do we pay uh, here in London, around the country, do we pay the living wage directly, and do we pay in London the living wage, the London uh, living wage? And um, the answer was yes. And then I said, well, I then thought, fine, well, we've resolved that. That's fine, as long as we know that answer. In fact, I then got a letter on my desk one morning when I came in, and it was from somebody who was a cleaner, cleaned the offices. Uh, and he said that uh, he does three jobs and has to rush around to make enough money and he would like the, the wage to go up. Uh, so I then asked again the question, well, hold on a second, what about the people that, do, you know, because I discovered we subcontract a lot. And um, I discovered that the subcontractors don't pay or didn't pay the London living wage at all. So we hauled in the subcontractors and asked them, will you now pay the London living wage? And they argued that they, you know, it would be difficult because you know, they would lose jobs and people would have to be laid off and everything else. Um, and we did put pressure on them in the end. And finally, they agreed to pay the London living wage in London. First of all, the living wage in the UK and then London living wage. What's quite interesting about this is it's been my view all along. Actually, they didn't lay anybody off when they did this because what actually happened was those people that were doing three jobs no longer needed to do the three jobs. So they actually did the job far better that they were doing uh, as a result of that because they had more time. They weren't rushing to somewhere else. They were able to spend more time on it. They got a higher wage. And as a result of that, actually, their productivity rose directly. So it was a kind of demonstration to me that when we asked them and they came back with a normal answer, in fact, it turned out that they could pay it. And when they paid it, they didn't have to lay anybody off in the end. So I definitely believe we've got to get the, the base wage up because uh, it's the best way to ensure that work always pays and therefore people are able to get the dignity. But there is an issue around housing in London. Housing is, uh, London is peculiar in the sense that it is such a magnet for, uh, for people of wealth in London that that also distorts the pricing of London housing. I mean, houses in London that you, know, you pay three, four hundred thousand pounds for, if you were to go up to Bradford or to Leeds, you'd be paying probably less than a third of the price for the same house. And so there is a distortion here, which does mean that we need, therefore, to provide more housing and the commitment of the work and pensions through uh, the benefit system is to be able to match that. So yeah, but getting the wage level up is the first and best way. If you work, work should pay, and therefore those who employ you have to pay you a wage that is a living wage. I've believed in that all my life, and I still believe in it, and I believe we are moving towards that, but I would like to accelerate it.